Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the WhatsApp for Business uh, Masterclass. So um, if, if you're here, you're probably interested in how do I get WhatsApp for Business running within my business. And, and I'm here to share the last sort of 12 months worth of insights, recipes and ingredients for getting up this incredible channel uh, ready, ready in your business and how to operate using WhatsApp. So I'm going to take you through a sort of a 12 month period, which 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 just outlines uh, how we've as a business engaged with WhatsApp, how we've shared WhatsApp for business with with partners uh, like Golden and First Technology and how we integrate WhatsApp for business into your businesses and some of those lessons that we've learned through the through the process. Um, so just in terms of new partnerships, Infobip is a global company. We've got a little over 60 offices worldwide on six continents. Uh, and we've got eight offices within the African continent. Con uh, continent. Um, our offices in Branston, and we team up with partners like Gelden, uh, where we can leverage off one Gelden's uh, relationship with with um, uh, with end users and customers. Uh, we're not integration specialists in any way. Infobip is is a communications platform as a service. So uh, we provide the service to. Uh, partners to be able to install and deploy and develop great communications on digital uh, applications uh, to mobile through through partners like Gelden and First Technology. So we've been in partnership a little over the last three months and very quickly in the last sort of month and a half there have been 10 new opportunities that have come in through the Gelden and First Technology stable and we've closed businesses like uh, SA Tourism and we're currently in the PSC with uh, VW in, in South Africa uh, on, on WhatsApp. So where do we start and how do we get going in, in terms of um, using WhatsApp as a business? We start with Infobip. So Infobip is one of a handful of business service providers to WhatsApp. Um, you can't, you, it, 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 it requires uh, quite, quite some regulations and requirements from a WhatsApp and Facebook point of view to become a business service partner. One, you need a couple of data centers around the world to carry the traffic. You need to be integrated into local uh, uh, mobile network operators and telcos. But what we do so well is we've got a single stack platform or single stack communications platform that we can plug in all over the top channels like, uh, like Slack, Line, Viber, WhatsApp, uh, Talk, Twitter, um, Skype. Uh, and then we can bring it into the typical channels that uh, work over the last 12 years, which is email, uh, SMS, voice, etc. We deliver we deliver all these channels from a global perspective. So what Infobip does really well is we establish our footprint within a country. Uh, we have good relationships with the local telcos and MNOs, and then we deliver our single uh, um, uh, stack across those channels into into the various countries and take the information and messaging from that country into other countries. What makes it unique is all these channels uh, sit on one platform. So we've got a single interface that's scalable. It's cloud based so that you can log into it from anywhere and operate with it anywhere. And there's a number of ways that you engage with the uh, with the communications platform. Um, we've got a customer engagement uh, layer which allows you as a customer to build out your own broadcasts. Uh, we've got designers and drag and drop designers that allow you to uh, build out broadcasts, flows across channels, uh, work within a CRM system, then analyze your campaigns and your messaging that you've sent out. And then, of course, we've got a couple other cool tools like mobile identity and anonymize. All this works over the programmable communications layer, which is the typical digital layers that deliver to mobile devices like SMS, voice, email, uh, and mobile app messaging. And then what's recently come on the scene is our chat apps. So things like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger have taken off in South Africa. And uh, below all of this, we've got a connectivity layer that we provide to, to MNOs, uh, chat apps, chat apps like, like uh, WhatsApp and then Google Cloud and Apple Cloud for your mobile applications. So just again, very quickly, one platform, all channels, um, and and uh, very easy to integrate with through our APIs um, and through our partner program. So the likes of Gelden and First Technology assist you with being able to integrate your back-end applica applications into our 
uh, various channels and uh, capabilities and 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 uh, rich rich media features. So for developers and business al business alike, there's a couple, there's two ways to really engage with Infobip. One is a no code environment, so we do provide a cloud platform where anybody within your team, regardless of their um, uh, coding background, can actually come back come into the web based interface and create really cool customer journeys using flows and broadcasts. But the key thing here is it's software that easy to use and it's a drag and drop environment where, where one, your partner can assist with training you up on how to use these uh, cool applications. Um, and, and two, a partner can assist with the code side. So from an API point of view, there's easily integration with single unified REST APIs um, where you can just, from your application, send out and broadcast messages to your to your customers. So that's just a brief take on on who Infobip is and how we engage and how we work with our partners. Let's get on to WhatsApp. So I'll take you through a couple of really cool examples, local examples of WhatsApp. Um, we've had an incredible uptake of WhatsApp for business in South Africa. It's been an amazing journey. It was launched about 12 months ago and the use cases are coming through thick and fast. There's so much information out in the market in terms of what you can and what you can't do. So this masterclass is designed just, just to one uh, sort of uh, push those myths aside um, and show you exactly how people are using WhatsApp and then to enable some sort of design um, uh, spark within your, own, within your own space on how you could use WhatsApp within your business. So what's really cool about it is it's across all sectors man so we've seen we've seen businesses in in an enterprise segment in retail and e-commerce um, that are using whatsapp uh, the banking and finance typically uh, uh, they've 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 been slow to market from a banking point of view but your e-wallets and your digital wallets have had super uptake on it um, and and other businesses that have been using it so i'm sure what some of you have used afri hosts whatsapp uh, which pushes through to a call center application. Flysaf Air deliver their uh, tickets over over WhatsApp. So there's so many use cases within it. And what's again, what's really cool is it's it's not a one size fits all. It 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 allows us to work with companies across all enterprises and all market segments within within the group. Companies like Makuru have been standouts. So this is a digital uh, digital wallet that runs through Africa. And and man, I tell you what, so they they're doing some massive massive traffic on on WhatsApp, and it's and it's probably six times more than what they've seen in any other channel. Um, Shoprite and Checkers and Macro have certainly uh, um, tested the boundaries of 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 what was the intended purpose of WhatsApp versus promotional activity. So I'll take you through a couple of examples how Shoprite and Macro are using WhatsApp to get through through uh, to. Uh, their customers and get some information through to their their customers and online users, but really broad strokes across for everybody um, and and there's a place for for anybody's business with within WhatsApp, which is which is the really cool part about it. From um, from a couple of local examples, and I'll take you through some live examples in a minute. But DSTV one were one of the earlier ones uh, in terms of introducing WhatsApp. Um, this was this was the idea to take some of the load off their call center and just and just provide customers with a self service uh, operation on WhatsApp and and they made it very easy in terms of the menu that you could choose from. So it's much like a USSD menu. It just looks prettier um, and sexier. So you could do things like pay your account, manage your holiday viewing. Uh, you could check up on errors. You could even rent a movie through it. So. You know, they they just give you a simple menu to choose from. MTN were early on to the the, the bandwagon with WhatsApp, and and through this use case, you can see that you can come in, purchase uh, some airtime or data bundles. Uh, you can present your card, choose the data bundle, and pay over WhatsApp. So that was that was one of the early pay over WhatsApp use cases that came into South Africa. Um, from Makuru, Makuru allows you to do it in various languages. So you can choose uh, out of nine languages on Makuru to be able to engage with their chatbot or with their automation center. Um, and then you can decide what you want to do, whether you want to sign up. So they've got this great application sign up process. Um, if you are already a customer, you can then do things like send money and, and so on. Uh, you'll see the sort of uh, train that's coming through here is that there are these menus uh, that, that 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 
that allow customers to do decision tree uh, options. Um, and I'll explain I'll explain the rationale behind that with a couple of slides later. So macro uh, macro is cool to watch because they change their menu all the time. So when when it's around Christmas or around Easter or around like now COVID-19, their menus change with different options. So on a weekly basis, they're updating um, and moving with the times in terms of in terms of WhatsApp all all the time, allowing you to come in and manage things like your loyalty card, manage things like uh, where's your where's your nearest store. You can ask. They've got they've got a natural language processing chatbot. Um, you can do things like check my order or my status. So again, it's just this great uh, uh, facility for customers to be able to come in and and service. Um, uh, self-service their options. The, the last four examples that I've showed you are very much like a USSD experience. So it's you, you generally start with a keyword like moo in the top left or hi, and then from there you choose a menu item. What we started seeing coming through just recently is something like our bureau. So our bureau, you can do a credit check uh, on a customer or on yourself or a person, and this starts with a hello. And then our bureau take you through uh, a process of 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 um, information. So yes, you choose you choose a path, but from there it starts getting pretty smart, and it asks you for your first name, it asks you for your surname, it uses your location pin uh, where you can submit your location, uh, and then it checks the location against your Rika Fika documents, and then it spits out your your um, credit report. So so they've gone further with using some of the features uh, and capabilities within WhatsApp like a, a location uh, a location pin. Um, and there's so many more of these examples that are coming through that I'll take you through a couple in uh, uh, as a live demo. From an account performance point of view, so this is where um, the, the results are, you know, it, it stacks up, man. So when, when I have face-to-face -face communications with customers and customers are at first skeptical and reluctant to move from the typical sort of push SMS and and email uh, um, campaigns and move into a world where where WhatsApp doesn't really like you to push information to their customers, so they make it difficult for you at first. But what's what what's incredible is that when you kind of nudge and use these nudge tools to to um, make customers aware that your WhatsApp channel is open, the volumes are astronomical. So uh, typically, what we found with Makuru is that they're receiving six times the applications on Makuru for Makuru money versus their USSD channel. Somebody like Avon, who does a direct uh, direct selling uh, through through consultants and agents, the first month that we opened their, their SMS, uh, their WhatsApp channel, um, they had a little over 370,000 messages within the first month. Now, they've got a little over 300,000 agents within the country, so it's, it's almost as though every agent um, uh, reached out to to understand more on the WhatsApp channel. Shoprite has been invited by WhatsApp globally to understand more on how they do it. Um, so Shoprite uh, have become an absolute phenomenon on on WhatsApp and have grabbed the attention of WhatsApp on a global scale. They had a meeting uh, last week in terms of uh, just understanding how Shoprite have engaged and how they're getting the volumes that they're getting. But 10 million messages monthly meant that their CIO moved every budget that they had from every other channel into WhatsApp. Um, and, and it just, it, they were skeptical at first. Uh, there was a young guy within ShopRite that, that drove the WhatsApp uh, movement. And for a little over six months, we, we were integrating also with a partner, we integrated into, into ShopRite. And, and by month eight, uh, we launched the checkers uh, loyalty um, extra savings card, and that's where the that's where the game changed for us. So again, it just ramped up within the first within the first week. We had a little over one million applications uh, that were that were completed uh, on on the extra savings uh, uh, application. Um, from from the unlimited. Now this is a success story from from our side, uh, where we used WhatsApp as a door opener. Um, I call it my land and expand strategy with with working with enterprises. So we start with WhatsApp. It's a great tool to sell into into an enterprise. And once an enterprise understands the value, not only of using WhatsApp as a channel, but also using our analysis tools of flows, chatbots, um, and just our dashboard analysis to understand where the volumes are coming, what time they're coming, who's sending them, 
and, and being able to work on that big data. Um, the Unlimited then expanded into all other, other channels. So they opened up uh, SMS email so that they could run their campaigns in parallel uh, from, from, from with, with WhatsApp and combined with WhatsApp. So it became a multi-channel project. And it was one of the first in South Africa that, that uh, closed all the other service providers and, and, sent, and started sending their, their campaign messages straight through, um, uh, straight through InfoBip's single communication platform and stack. So why has WhatsApp been so successful? Um, the numbers have just been outstanding. People want to be able to message your business. They're on WhatsApp in any case. And don't for one minute think that because your business deals with a lower LSM that you're missing out. It's, 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 it's just the opposite. Um, so what we found in a number of uh, use cases, um, I'm going to use a bus ticketing uh, company that we did a use case with. Their call center generally does about 10,000 calls on a weekly basis. 80% of those calls are asking, have you got a bus leaving, at, uh, have you got a bus to Joburg? Uh, and then the call center agent has to go through the usual process of uh, where do you want to leave from? What day do you want to leave? Uh, okay, here's the price. Um, and, and we automated this into a WhatsApp channel. Um, and, and within the first week, 50% of their calls were dropped. So we added it to the IVR that you could ask for a bus channel that you could ask for a bus ticket through their WhatsApp channel. Um, and and it just it, it was incredible in terms of the volumes that came through. What it did show us is that that we didn't expect for one second that the lower LSM would be uh, one have have access to WhatsApp um, and two that they would use WhatsApp for for something like that. Uh, and again, uh, I, I eat my words almost every time the, the everybody, everybody in Africa has got access to this to this application. And it has just become the biggest, the biggest channel for for messaging. Well, the other stuff that comes through quite, quite, uh, quite uniquely is is the times. So, one has to get your head around this push versus pull uh, campaigning. Um, I call it nudge now. I mean, you you nudge your customers in the right direction to to indicate that you have got a WhatsApp channel. And, and what's incredible with that, and we saw this with the ShopRite uh, example, is customers prefer to come on in their time. So if we run, if we ran campaigns like an SMS campaign and an email campaign that pushed information out to the customers, um, it wasn't as successful as just a nudge campaign that, that indicated to customers that something was available on WhatsApp. And then there are these spikes between 11 and 1 in the afternoon. So while people are sitting down having lunch, and then these massive spikes between four and nine in the evening, where customers have got, uh, where customers have got the capability of doing it in their time, and that that seemed to be the important thread that came through is that when I've got the time to do it, I'll do it and I'll look through uh, what what is available. And this was the game changer for Shoprite, and I'll take you through Shoprite's example uh, in in a minute. So, if you're here today, you're probably asking. Does WhatsApp fit in my business? And, and a couple of slides earlier, I showed you it fits in almost every business. Any business that, that even, even in a B2B environment or specifically in a B2C environment is, is where WhatsApp fits. It fits in where you need to solve critical business issues and, and where automation would be able to solve those. So I call it automate the boring stuff. And typically automate the boring stuff could, could look at, at, at one, reducing costs within your business and, and between your customer. How do we reduce costs? If I just automate the stuff that generally comes into my call center, whether that's a support call center, whether it's an application, whatever it is, if I don't have to have the bums in seats and I can actually push this through to an automation process, I can reduce the costs. Um, I can increase accessibility to my customers. So uh, typically a call center is nine to five or eight to eight to six or whatever the hours are. But I can increase I can increase the accessibility by having a, a um, an automation process that runs after hours. One also that handles more mundane and simple tasks. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the sort of research that we've done in call center environments is that agents are just attending to these mundane and simple tasks that one could quite easily automate through a channel like like WhatsApp. That would then improve operational efficiencies because you start releasing your 
uh, call center agents and or your staff um, onto dealing with with real real business issues and solving critical business issues within that uh, and, and just raising a customer experience. So while you've got this accessibility, you're raising your customer experience in terms of one, you're accessible, two, you're dealing with a couple of, a couple of issues that, that could be dealt with through automation um, and, and just giving the customer a sense that, that you're available to chat to. So what do we automate and how do we how can we automate and where do I start within my business and where we've seen a large uptake is things like form filling applications and registration. So yeah, I've got yeah, I've got a website form filler, but what we've learned in the past with website form filling is that customers don't want to put too much detail in. So they just generally want to pick up their name and their cell phone number. What we found with WhatsApp is we can take customers through this entire journey. Uh, we've got it in the insurance business where claim forms are now starting to be filled in on, on WhatsApp. And, and by that, we can do a claim form that asks for your name, your surname, and then asks for a photograph of, of, of the damage or the, or the um, uh, yeah, let's call it the damage of your vehicle. Um, and, and then it can ask for your license. So you can literally fill in your entire claim form uh, over WhatsApp. So we've seen threads of form filling and registrations and claim, claim forms and applications coming through. The next thing is my status. So once you've done something, what, what is the status of it? So I filled the form in or I've done my claim form. What's the status? Uh, I need some feedback, in other words. Um, and these are things that you could easily automate um, uh, within, within the application process so that you can just give your customer the feedback. Uh, the, other, the other option that we're seeing a lot of is where is, so where is your store? Where is your near, nearest store? Uh, where is my delivery? Um, so these are all things, again, that customers are asking for uh, in terms of self-service. The other thing is how much. We've seen that in almost every thread. So working with ShopRite and the things like, uh, like Avon um, in the retail segment is how much. How much is this product on your, on your website? Have you got stock of it? Uh, um, uh, and, that's, and that's, again, something that you could quite easily automate. How much is that bus ticket to Durban? Um, and... What we did see with, with DSTV is this is not working. So uh, I've got a problem with my decoder. This is not working. So this could go through to your FAQs and, and your typical problem solving uh, exercises uh, that, that are listed again on your websites that make it available and accessible to your customers through, through WhatsApp. The other new trend that's starting to work quite pretty well on WhatsApp is surveys. So once you've completed a form, once you've completed the process of the application or whatever it is, uh, within that process and, and you've dealt with a customer's uh, um, uh, self-service option where they wanted to get some support out of your business, then you can send out a survey and rate, rate that service or send out surveys for various other op uh, operations uh, or touch points within your, your business. So these are the typical um, automations that we're seeing on, on WhatsApp and I'll take you through a couple of uh, cool live examples in, in, in a minute. Um, this is just a case study that we did with uh, with Avon. So from a business point of view, there is the skepticism that that if I create automation in my business and I start automating things at a call center level or automating things within my business, that, that I'm, I'm essentially looking at cutting jobs. In fact, we've seen it the opposite. So something like, like Avon, uh, uh, they came out with a bold statement that said, no, no, we're, we're actually creating jobs through automation. So... Uh, a simple WhatsApp chatbot connected uh, six million entrepreneurs to a life-changing uh, event where they can uh, they have the opportunity now of applying as a new uh, beauty entrepreneur um, and setting up through that application. Uh, they start now with with um, uh, uh, applying for new jobs. The sign up process is easy. So uh, again, there's a menu to choose from, and through that uh, they sign up, become a beauty entrepreneur. There's, there's a bit of qualification that takes through in terms of who you are, what your ID number is. Please send us an ID photo. And this is the use case that, that, that Avon have, uh, have put on their WhatsApp channel. Give us your email address and your home address. And from there, once they're approved, uh, then they can start buying Avon and Justine products and they can start getting more information. So Avon has started using this as well as a training facility in terms of how to upskill their, uh, uh, their sales agents to understand their products a little bit better and they are reaching far more of their agents than what they ever were with, with any other of the channels. 
So what is the future like in terms of phases and rollouts? So this is another thread that we see common is that um, start, start small with WhatsApp and then build future features within. So they're looking at a self-service option. Um, they're looking at balance and order checks, earning calculators that they can add to WhatsApp, stock, uh, stock control, as well as a pay over WhatsApp that, that should be coming through soon to, to the Avon. What it does is it, empowering, it empowers their call center agents. So they've got much more data and time to now allow agents to, to tackle more meaningful tasks within the business. So again, I like to see automate the boring stuff on WhatsApp that frees up uh, your business to be able to deal with critical business issues within, with, with outside of that uh, WhatsApp environment. What's pretty cool with Avon, again, there were 370,000 messages in the first month. This is unlike anything that they've seen. Um, this is one of the first steps in the digital revolution that they that they took. Um, and and uh, it, it, it will be soon rolled out uh, across the globe in, uh, in, in, in the Avon environment. So how do I enable it as a business? How do I enable my own WhatsApp sender? It's pretty simple. Working, working through a certified partner like Geldon, um, there's two steps really. Um, one is you as a business require a Facebook business verification. So you need a business Facebook page. And from that, you need to need to get your Facebook business verified. We have, and, and, and Geldon as a partner has a typical Facebook business verification guide that takes you through the process and in many instances will facilitate and assist with your business verification. It's a four or five step uh, uh, process. It's pretty simple. It needs two or three documents to be submitted. And it's generally your, your tax certificate and your business registration certificate that's required. Um, and, then, and then that business verification uh, goes through. It takes two to three days to get Facebook business verification. And that's if all your documents are aligned. What I can, what I can recommend and add as a tip and trick here is make sure that all your documents are aligned. So if your business certification says uh, that is your business address, your registered address and your postal address, make sure that that documentation or those, um, uh, th that, that address applies on all the documents that you submit with Facebook, and then you won't have any problems getting your business verification sorted. Um, if your business deals with alcohol, gambling, uh, pornography or government, it, 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 it it becomes a different scenario. Um, the WhatsApp will not do business with companies that, that uh, sell drugs, alcohol, porn, gambling, and, and I will drop a link in this live session towards, towards the end of the, the session in terms of what the WhatsApp commerce policies are. Gelden, as a partner, does have this information, so you just have to reach out and say, do we qualify as a business to be able to register for Facebook business verification? and WhatsApp application. The second step is once you have your business verification, you submit that with, uh, with your partner um, and it, we, we submit a WhatsApp for business application to WhatsApp. And this takes generally another two to three days. So, so we, we can get an application through in about three to five days. Um, I did it this week with Time Bank. We, we submitted on Monday last week and by Friday we had had we had had the uh, WhatsApp channel and sender uh, that that went live. Um, so that's the two easy steps with within and and how to enable your sender. Let's say once I've got WhatsApp, um, what are the what are the issues that 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 I face? So the, some of the lessons that I've learned uh, through dealing with large uh, integrations on on WhatsApp and integrating them into your business is do it as a phased approach. Uh, don't go from from uh, zero to a chatbot hero kind of thing. So um, don't don't introduce chatbot too early. Uh, the examples that I showed you earlier on were very USSD focused. So you give your customers decision trees to choose from, and that way you educate your customers on how to engage with your platform. Um, we've seen businesses launch these natural language chatbots too early, and customers just don't know how to speak to a full natural conversational. Uh, chatbot right from the beginning. So do a phased approach, and I'll show you in a further slide on how the, what that phased approach uh, phased approach looks like. 
What we have seen are these runaway trains and unexpected volumes. So be prepared uh, when you open your WhatsApp channel um, uh, and you open it on something like your business number or your call center number, be prepared. The volumes come thick and fast. Uh, what's great is it allows us to troubleshoot and handle uh, what, what we didn't expect for. Um, but, but we've certainly seen on almost everything that we've opened, um, and Harambi is a great experience of that. So, so Harambi or a youth centre uh, um, uh, employment accelerator, they opened their WhatsApp channel last week, and within within three hours, we had 450,000 interactions on that channel. It broke WhatsApp, so uh, we very quickly had to scale up. Um, to allow the volumes through, uh, and those volumes, uh, we, we ended up with a little over 1.6 million users in just over six days. So you get these runaway trains on this channel, and 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 it exceeds every expectation that you that you ever had as a business. How do I accelerate WhatsApp? I'll go through that in the next two slides. So how do I let customers know that I've got the WhatsApp channel? What does that cost me? Do I need to set up uh, costs for it? Um, and are there cheaper ways that, that, that I can deal with it in terms of under, letting my customers use WhatsApp uh, in my business? Um, the reason why we see these runaway trains, it's simple. WhatsApp is cheaper. It's cheaper than taking a taxi. It's cheaper than making a call. It's cheaper than everything else. It's cheaper than an SMS. It runs over Wi-Fi, and, and this is where we see these runaway trains. And, and nobody expects the volume that they get through it, which is great. It, it, it always ends up as a, as, a, as a success story within every business. Um, and again, I stress, don't think for one minute that your business deal, deals with the lower LSM market that they, that they don't have WhatsApp. This is where we are seeing the big volumes coming through. From, is from zero to Chatbot Hero, this is just a phased approach that I was talking about. So we deliver with Galden um, and First Technology, we've got uh, a human-to-human -human real time chat so that's something that you can switch on within a, within a couple of hours of your channel or your WhatsApp channel going live. You can switch on a human-to-human -human real time um, application that drives uh, messages from a human WhatsApp into an agent call center and keeps them within WhatsApp. Of course, the the, the drawback of this is is that again you're back to um, uh, back to business hours, um, but we've seen great success with keeping people. Uh, on, on, on WhatsApp as, as, a, as a chat function within your call center. Then we introduce a basic chatbot, which is built with uh, a flow builder. Uh, InfoBip have, uh, provide this functionality to partners like Gelden, where you can build these cool flow builders that allow you to introduce a simple um, uh, decision tree chatbot, which allows the customer to choose a specific part of your menu. So yes, I want to balance or, or yes, I, I need some customer service, etc. Phase three, we see this coming in, in in about the 12 month mark. So nine to 12 months, you start educating your customer to move away from a decision tree chatbot into a natural language processing chatbot. So, and, and the reason why is, is I don't want to have to go through a single uh, entry menu every time. I just want to be able to get to the point where I can ask for a balance or uh, ask for an application quite easily without having to go through all the menu options that are available because the menus get bigger and bigger. And I'll show you a couple examples of how we engage with the natural language versus versus decision tree uh, in the next couple of minutes. Right, so that takes me to the end of, uh, end of this presentation. What I'd like to do quickly is just switch across and just take you through a couple of uh, uh, live examples. Um, this, this for me is one of the best examples. So Rumbi uh, has, has just recently launched. You'll see the difference uh, with, with the various businesses. Once you have a registered business on a WhatsApp channel, one, you get this green tick um, uh, that, that says that you are a verified business with WhatsApp. It allows customers to have a look at the various uh, uh, details of your business and grab your business, uh, business details in terms of who can I contact? What number on? Uh, what's your website address? So it does it does give you an official business account with a bit of detail around that business account. If I go to something like Harambi, um, I prepped this one already. I've said hi. Uh, Harambi has given me a couple of options, so I can reply uh, with Bona, and then it will take me down 
a, 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 again, different menus will open up. Um, what you can see from this is how quick it is. Uh, I want to be able to reply next because I want to see the story that, they, that they're talking about. So this is a Corona story that they do various episodes on. And, and this is a great example of just the use of rich media that you can use within the WhatsApp environment. So I'm asking, I want to use episodes uh, one. Uh, I want to reply comic because I want to be able to see it in a comic version. Um, and then, then this just gives you a great example of how they use rich media within within WhatsApp. So I can go and read their comic version. Once I'm done with that page, I can type in next. Um, and it's just nice, awesome uh, customer experience with, with within the WhatsApp environment. So again, they're using this as an educational option on educating people in terms of how to how to work within this uh, Corona uh, period, um, but just great use of rich media and images. And, and it's the first comic, comic strip that I've seen with, within WhatsApp. If I go to something like ShopRite, um, again, ShopRite, uh, many of them have got keywords, many of them just start with a hi. Um, this one has already allocated uh, stores for me that I can work with. So I'm just going to say, you know what, I'm going to work with uh, ShopRite, Hillbra to see what their specials are in Hillbra because I'm closest to uh, Hillbra. Um, it then says, uh, do I want to view leaflets? Do I want to find another store? No, I want to view leaflets because before I go shopping, I want to plan my shopping and I want to see what their specials are. Um, and uh, if the, the leaflet, please note, note downloading the leaflet incurs data costs. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I just want to go straight onto the leaflets. And then ShopRite uses these broadsheets and they send out the broadsheets to you. Um, so again, WhatsApp, WhatsApp kind of jumped at us as a service provider to ShopRite and said, oh, hang on a sec, ShopRite can't do this because they're not supposed to be doing promotional activity over WhatsApp. And ShopRite's answer was simple, no, but my customer chooses it. My customer chose to do this and my customer chose to see what those broadsheets are. So I can go and have a look and plan my plan uh, my shopping. The only thing that ShopRite can't do is sell drugs and alcohol or advertise drugs and alcohol onto their broadsheets. So I can very quickly just do things like price comparison using their broadsheets and just get an understanding of what's on special at the store so that I can go in this week and, and have a look. Um, the other one is, uh, I'll show you a typical example of, of a form filler. So uh, if I go into Infobip, uh, am I in? For, yeah, there we go. So this one, I use a keyword to get into. Uh, this is our our very own South African version, um, and and I'll show you. This is this is now moving away from the typical one enter, two enter to do something. I can now start chatting with it. So I'm doing a, a for, form filling exercise. Um, so I'm, I'm 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 moving to more of a natural language kind of chatbot. This chatbot introduces themselves. And then asks me for my name and surname. So this is great stuff in terms of being able to work with. So my name is Sean Van Royen. Um, it then is intelligent enough to pick that up as a variable. It spits it back at me. So now I'm feeling like great customer experience. Um, this, the, this person recognizes or this chatbot recognizes who I am. And they're talking back to me. What is my email address? I can go sean at email.com. Um, and, and I'm in the process now of filling in a form or an application. One, it's pretty cool to do. It's, it's fun. It asks me, uh, do I want to confirm uh, if all my information is correct or does give me the option to uh, amend any of the information. So I say, yes, um, right, uh, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, it then says, thank you again. It's a little cheesy exercise, but it just shows again the use of rich media that you can put within your information. And then I can type in to chat uh, and, and, and finish the chat. I did see an option to chat to an agent. So I just want to come back into that so I can show you how the live chat works. So from a Galden and First Technology perspective, this is how you would wrap this up into your call centers. Uh, so that's automation or automate the boring stuff. So I've filled in the form. Now what I want to do is just chat to an agent because I want to understand uh, what's going on. So I'll take you into two applications. One, I'm going to keep WhatsApp and then I'll take you into our call center application. So this is what the call center application looks like. There's nothing in my queues at the moment because I've entered my queues for this exercise. 
So what I want to do is just say chat to agent. Um, and then it says to me, cool, thank you very much. I'll hand you off to a real person um, uh, who will continue with a live chat option. Um, and this environment then brings up. What you didn't see is a little pop-up that came up on my screen that says, uh, dear agent, you've received a new message. Um, I've already registered this number with the system, but I can start with talking to John. It opens, it opens the conversation. I can then, as an agent, I can go and see all the history that John did with my chatbot. So I can assess uh, what the interaction was, maybe where he got stuck and why he would want to talk to me as, an, as a real-time agent. Um, so then I can introduce myself and say, hi, John. Uh, uh, my name uh, is Sean. Uh, how can I help sort of thing? How can I help? So real time, human to human, I'll just, I'll just point out that my current WhatsApp has still got seven messages. The minute I come back and send a message here, uh, it will ping on my WhatsApp that I've got eight messages. It's instant and it's real time. So John can say, hi, Sean, um, I need help with my application uh, and I'm going to send it through with the terrible spelling mistakes as well. Uh, and, and here's the pop-up that says, uh, hi, John, uh, Sean, I need help with my application and I can come back into my call center environment. Um, what this allows me as an agent, I can then start setting up things like uh, conversation summaries. So I can say, uh, Sean uh, has, or, or John, sorry, John, I use John as the name. So John uh, has a problem, problem with application. So I can start leaving myself as an agent. I can start leaving myself some um, breadcrumbs. Um, I can also pick up things like his uh, customer information. So I can start filling John's information in a little bit more in terms of what his last name is. I could ask John for his last name. The other thing is, is let's say um, applications are not my division. I can then type an internal note and say passing uh, this to accounts agent. Uh, John needs help with application process. So again, just leaving myself some uh, notes within the flow uh, where uh, this will be passed on to the next agent. I can then go and assign this to the next agent. So here are the agents within my business that deal with real-time uh, real-time chats. Um, I can also do things like close, uh, open, waiting, closed, solve. So I can set the status uh, of, of this conversation that I'm having. So just, just again, just showing the ability to be able to take WhatsApp from an automated uh, environment into a real-time environment. And how do, I, how do I get WhatsApp within my business to do one or the other or both? So that brings me, and that concludes, uh, I think I've got about five minutes left um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of our presentation. Uh, I hope I'm going to minimize that and just have a look if there are any questions. So if there are any questions, please just drop them in your chat environment. I can deal with them in the next five minutes. Um, but that just gives you a broad strokes of one, what does WhatsApp look like as, as WhatsApp for business? How do I uh, with Gelden and with Infobip, how do I get WhatsApp into my business? Um, uh, then, then what does the application process look like? I've showed you Facebook. And then in a live environment, what does that automation look like? And what does the real-time uh, version look like in terms of uh, speaking from a real-time agent to agent? So I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, it says, what security features can be implemented to avoid abuse? And in case of our bureau to comply with with Poppy. Um, so there's a number of security features that, that one can set up. Uh, we, we, we provide a hell of a lot of them. So we've got this mobile identity tool that we can, that we can put in place um, that, that one identifies your mo mobile uh, through, through various, various options. Uh, we've got a couple of authentication layers that we can, that we can set up in terms of um, uh, rec facial recognitions, biometrics, um, and I hope that's the sort of security features that you can uh, that, that you're asking about. But but they're, they're all available. I'm going to extend those security features and say we have we have launched in South Africa. In fact, the first use cases 
in, in the world are coming out of South Africa in terms of payment over WhatsApp. So we've got a authentication layer that sits over WhatsApp that one can start doing card payments um, uh, through the product. So uh, MTN are running that in terms of buying airtime and data. You submit your card and there's an authentication layer that comes over that. So it depends on what sort of security features you require, but but uh, there, there's a whole heap of them that are already uh, starting to, to fall into place. The second question, um, let me just publish that. Let's see if that makes a difference. So uh, the second question is, the use cases are customer messaging. Can you integrate to business infrasystems like ERP and do stock management, logistics, et cetera, so business owners can automatically track their deliveries rather phone a call center? Yeah, so absolutely. We're seeing some great use cases in the logistics area coming through. Yes, we can integrate into systems like ERP, and that's why we work with partners like Gelden and, and First Technology. They, ha they do, do provide integration um, as, as a service um, and, and assist with the integrations into your complex environments. Not only can we integrate into things like ERPs, but we can integrate through our APIs, we can integrate into your CRMs, uh, into whatever uh, whatever applications you're running with your within your business, provided that you can through an API integrate into that application. So so yes, we're seeing uh, typical things like stock management, uh, where we've got sales people out on the road, they can quickly do a stock report straight there and then in front of the customer, and and we've be we've seen WhatsApp being used for that. Logistics, yes, we're seeing uh, logistics being used for it in terms of. Uh, once I've delivered, I can get the customer just to sign or scan within WhatsApp. Uh, you don't need a mobile app for it. You can just use WhatsApp as your back end. And we're seeing courier companies uh, uh, using WhatsApp for, for that as a um, use case. Um, so then the next one is any public sector examples for, for use of WhatsApp? Um, uh, uh, yes, so instead of COVID-19, we, we've got so many, so many use cases um, in, in, that, that deal with things like domestic violence and, and uh, abuse and suicide and, and all sorts of uh, use cases. If you'd like, um, on, on infobip.com, uh, there is, uh, uh, let me do a reply here um, if I can. Uh, on infobip.com, there are a number of use cases that you can wade through. Uh, we've got a section on our website that says documents. Um, if you'd like, uh, contact one of the Golden Sales people and Infobip will assist to, to expose a lot of those use cases. Can you broadcast to the user base example ShopRite advertising their specials for the weekend? So, no, uh, you can't broadcast out. WhatsApp doesn't like you to broadcast any promotional activity out. Um, they control the, the outbound activity through a message template, and the message template needs to be approved by WhatsApp, and this is to avoid any spamming. What we've seen with channels like SMS and email is they eventually lose their, or their lackluster kind of um, uh, attraction. Uh, so WhatsApp are very, very, very sensitive around um, the activity uh, of, of promotional activity outbound. Again, I call it nudge, uh, nudge campaigning. Um, and if you nudge your customers through various touch points, whether it's, it's um, out of home touch points, uh, whether it's in, in store touch points, if you just nudge your customers, they'll come. Don't worry, they'll come. So it, it's a great, it's a big mindset to change within your business, which says this push versus pull. Um, but once you start nudging on, on other channels and, and, and other spaces, your customers come into WhatsApp because it's so easy to use and understand. Uh, um, and, and, and the cool thing is, is I'm using it in my own time. The, the next question is, if, if what, if oh, what are the limitations? Uh, maybe if so. So maybe I've covered that. Uh, what are the limitations? The limitations are you've got to, you've got to, use the outbound um, messaging within WhatsApp rules. Um, it's, it's not to say that you can't do it. Uh, again, ShopRite have, uh, have, have 
been able to get through a lot of their stuff using using the the, the use the, the use of English language um, and just being able to send their customer kind of a birthday message with an interaction that says uh, you know here's something for you to grab and then you get a call to action. The outbound activity of WhatsApp um, far exceeds whatever you can do on something like an SMS or an email. One, it, it, we can do it in a hell of a lot more text so uh, and characters. So typically an SMS outbound is 160 characters. On WhatsApp, we can do 1,024. The other thing that we can do is send rich media with it. So you can drop a PDF or an invoice or a statement. And then the third thing that, that you get real big return on investment is, is this call to action. So essentially your first outbound activity um, it shouldn't shouldn't contain any promotional uh, um, uh, uh, content, but it certainly can have a nudge that will get your customer to respond, and and that call to action is where you get the, where, where you get the, the the big bang for your buck out of, which is something that you can't really do on SMS and, and or uh, and or email. So it's how you work within those limitations. And again, we've got dozens and dozens of use cases that that we can assist with. So my advice is. Get hold of a, a Geldam and First Technology salesperson um, that ties back into into the Infobip uh, platform and and assist with working within those limitations on on how one can use a broadcasted message to your to your advantage. Uh, right. So let's just deal with that one. Let's deal with that one. The next question is: Is there an interface for call center agents to manage interactions, or do they use WhatsApp for web? So um, Shailendra, I've just shown you the interface. Um, it's, it's covered the, You can either use the Infobip platform or web platform where you can, you can uh, log in anywhere. So uh, this, was, this was the platform that I showed you um, that, that one can interact on. You will not, as, as WhatsApp for Business, you will not be able to interact on, on a uh, WhatsApp web. Um, it's it's two separate. WhatsApp Web is peer to peer, uh, where WhatsApp for Business is peer to business, and then we put you into a business call center application, like like an Anywhere 365 or like an Infobip conversation. So it all depends what application you're running is 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 how you would engage. But our API will allow you to engage on that. So that I hope that covers your your question. Is there an interface for call center agents? Yes, there is. Um, uh, Shalandra asks, what is the commercial pricing model? So the commercial pricing model is simple. Um, there are small setup fees uh, that, that, that uh, partners and, and Infobip charge to be able to enable the WhatsApp channel. But from there, it's all, it's all uh, what we call monthly active user base. So Infobip along with Galden are the only partners that um, globally that set a monthly active user fee. Everybody else around the globe charges a per message fee. It, it works out super expensive, specifically when you're running high volume. So something like ShopRite, it's the reason why ShopRite have ended up on the Infobit platform. It's the reason why MultiChoice and Absa have ended up on the Infobit platform is because we charge a monthly active user fee. And that monthly active user fee is, is defined as such as that when somebody asks your business a question over WhatsApp and you respond to it, your response uh, uh, then gets charged for that monthly active user fee. It's around 30 cents per, per monthly active user. The cool thing is, is that regardless of messaging that takes place between you and that person for the rest of the month, that, that messaging is free. You get charged once off for the monthly active user and then all messages thereafter are free between, between you and the customer. Um, and again, that free for the rest of the month is where the game changer comes in. So anybody that you, any other service provider, WhatsApp service provider that's charging a per message model, by the time you start adding it up, it's six to 10 times more expensive to work as a per message model versus a monthly active user uh, model. So, so yep, uh, we, can, we can provide commercial models and, and tiers. And again, get a hold of a salesperson through First Technology and Galden um, that will assist with the tiers on, on the uh, monthly active user fees. Lastly, the last question is, how can you use this for a local municipal environment? So 
Um, yes, man, it, it's been tough to work with local municipalities on this because local municipalities are driven and, and, and managed by government and WhatsApp will not do business with, uh, with WhatsApp. So, uh, I mean, WhatsApp will not do business with government. So we found a, a couple of loopholes and ways and workarounds uh, with this. Um, again, get hold of a, a Galden uh, or, or first technology salesperson and we'll work within your environment in terms of creating creating methods and ways to work within the local municipality. So local municipality things where, where, where we cover covering areas are things like uh, electricity, um, uh, you know, services, being able to pay for services and being able to log uh, 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 complaints and things like that. So there are ways. What, what we can't do is, is register the local municipality as a WhatsApp user. We have to we have to channel it through a business that is providing a service to customers on behalf of the local municipality. So there are ways to do that. Richard asked, can you forward the commercials? Uh, absolutely, Richard. I'm sure one of the sales guys will, will follow up. Um, and, and that seems to be it. Right. Thank you, everyone. I, I hope I hope this opened opened some thought and creative processing within your your headspace in terms of how my business can deal with WhatsApp. Uh, what I can assure you is that every WhatsApp channel that we've opened, uh, we've exceeded every expectation. The the traffic and the foot traffic comes into this channel, and and it and and it's what you do with that traffic thereafter is the the huge return on investment in terms of. Um, opening WhatsApp as a channel. Um, it's a super simple process. Uh, follow the guidelines and, and it's, it's very easy to activate. And once active, uh, it becomes a great business tool for you and, and your customers alike. Please contact anybody at Golden and First Technology, all the salespeople that are provided um, and, and uh, um, deal, work with them to understand what it is your business does Let's understand the scope of work within your business on how, how and what we can suggest in terms of and recommend in terms of how, how, how to set up WhatsApp in, in your environment. How do we automate it with your environment? And, and also, how do we make it as a real-time real -time chat tool in, in your business?